Hi everyone! Alright, so for today's tutorial I'll be showing you how we can use Houdini in conjunction with Cinema 4D and Octane Render. So we'll basically be jumping into Houdini, creating a smoke simulation and then exporting that simulation out of Houdini using the .vdb format. Now for those of you wondering what Houdini is, Houdini is actually an incredibly powerful program uh, that's used a lot in visual effects and movies for creating different types of simulations from explosions, um, smoke, it's just a really powerful program and um, I wanted to find a particular workflow where I was able to use Houdini but then export it over to a program that I was more comfortable to work in because uh, if you're not really comfortable with um, a lot of the terminology using Houdini the program can actually be a little bit complex to work with so uh, I love the fact that Houdini is capable of creating really awesome simulations and then uh, just you know finding a workflow where you can export those simulations and bring it into a program that you're really comfortable to work with uh, creates a really uh, nice workflow so just one thing to point out uh, that I'm still trying to figure out myself so if there's anyone that actually knows how to troubleshoot this a lot of us will benefit from that but uh, when I actually e uh, export these simulations uh, even if I make the overall quality pretty high in Houdini when I import it into uh, Cinema 4D and adjust some of the settings the smoke still isn't uh, completely crisp it still looks a little bit blurry you can see that from the thumbnail image over here so uh, that's still something I'm trying to figure out but this tutorial is aimed at showing you how we can actually export uh, these simulations and bring it into another program and continue working on it right guys so without further ado let's get started alright guys so you can see I'm using Houdini FX uh, now this tutorial like I said is aimed at just showing you how to export simulations out of here so I'm not going to be going into uh, I'm not going to be going in depth into any of these tools uh, but you'll still be able to see what I'm doing here and I'll just be explaining it very briefly uh, so I'm just going to create a quick smoke simulation so I'm going to go in this area over here our scene area I'm going to press tab and I'm going to type in sphere in the search area over here and then press enter and just left click to drop our sphere and this is basically it's like a node based uh, workflow right so once we've got our sphere over here I'm gonna double click to go into my sphere and change it from a, prim a primitive to polygon and then I'm just gonna increase my frequency a little bit so I'll put my frequency on 5 right so once I've done that yeah at the top we've got a whole bunch of tabs uh, like I said, I'm not going to really go in depth into any of this right now, but we are going to go to a particular tab that we need to use, which is Pyro FX. And we've got um, these scenes with all the settings already set up for us. So all we have to do is uh, select a particular scene and it will apply it to the sphere. So I'm going to go for Billowy Smoke. So I'm, I clicked on Billowy Smoke and I need to select the source, which is going to be my sphere. And I'll click on Billowy Smoke again and it's just going to calculate and create that billowy smoke take a couple of seconds and there we go so as you can see on the right uh, there's a lot of stuff that actually happened uh, there was a lot of stuff like I said these are presets so everything is already set up for us and ready to go so down here if I click on play you can see that uh, let me just click on this camera so that I can zoom out here a little bit and rotate around it but you can see we've got everything set up We've got our smoke in this container and uh, everything is animated so that's perfect. Uh, and with regards to this box, I'm actually going to increase the height of this box a little bit because you can see it's like hitting the ceiling over here. So in order to do that, I'm going to go into, I'm going to go into Pyro. Let me just go back to Pyro Sim and I'm going to go into Pyro and over here by size I want to adjust this following value I'll put this on 20 and then I'll just bring this simulation right back to the beginning and now if I click on play you'll see that our simulation there's just a little bit more room for that smoke to go up before it actually hits the ceiling which is perfect so I'll just stop it there so you guys can see and if you actually wanted to visualize the smoke a little bit better all you have to do is go to lights and cameras and then over here we have a point light so wherever we face in in our view uh, we basically just have to hold down control and left click and it basically applies a point light to that exact point that we were looking at the smoke 
So if I click back on this camera here and move around, you can see now there's some shading on our, our smoke here just to better visualize it within Houdini. Now this isn't going to play much of an important role once we take it over to Octane, but like I said, this is just for Houdini. Um, so one thing to keep in mind, I'm going to just right click over here and because these nodes are all over the place right now, I'm going to right click. I'm going to go to layout controls and say layout all just so it's all organized again. I'm going back into pyro sim and this thing over here called division size in Houdini this basically controls the overall quality of the smoke. So just for the purpose of this tutorial I'm going to put my smoke on 0 0.5. I usually if you want really high quality smoke you'll put it on something as low as uh, 0 0.2 even 0 0.1. Right so like I said, we've got a very basic uh, smoke simulation. I'm just going to bring that back to the beginning. And now it's basically going to generate our smoke with that division size on 0.05. Uh, right, guys, so those of you familiar with Houdini, uh, you'll know exactly what I just did there. Like I said, this isn't really aimed at uh, any... This isn't a beginner tutorial. Uh, I just want to show you guys how we can export this out of here. So for those of you that have already created simulations, let's actually head on to the most important part. Uh, but again, I just in decided to include this in case there was anyone interested in uh, just setting up a quick simulation that they could export. So, right, we've got some basic smoke over here. You can see it looks a lot better with that division size. And then uh, from here, like I said, the most important thing is how do we export this out of here? Right, so let's head on to the next step. Alright, so let's export this. I'm going to click on OBJ and we're going to go into the Pyro import section. And then while I'm in here, um, here on the import Pyro fields, I'm going to click on this drop down arrow and you'll see there's this little string and this is basically used to connect nodes together. So while that string is active, I'm going to press tab and type in convert and you'll see there's an option here called convert VDB and then left click and there you can see import pyrofills is connected to convert to VDB. So then we're going to click on VDB and we're going to change this convert to, we want to convert this to VDB uh, and then the group. Uh, basically, I'm just going to click on this arrow and select the smoke. Right, so once it's done that, if we click on the drop down arrow, you'll see there's a bunch of stuff we can select here. Now, this is all uh, related to what your pyro uh, simulation consists of. So for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to select pyro. I'm going to select the density, the, the heat. Yeah, okay, there's no real heat in this. Well, I think there might be. <laughs> uh, but I'm going to select velocity x, vel y, and vel dot z. Uh, do I need to select temperature, fuel and temperature? We can leave those for now. Uh, but like I said, maybe if you're creating an explosion, there's obviously all of that stuff that comes into play with this fuel and temperature and even heat and all of that. So you'd want to select all of the stuff that's related to your simulation. Anyway, once you've got all of these fuels selected, uh, what we want to do is we want to create another uh, tab down here. So this time by convert VDB, I'm going to click on the down arrow Make sure I've got that string. I'm going to press tab and I'm going to type in file and then left click to drop that. And basically file is going, going to allow us to uh, actually export this uh, out of uh, Houdini. So here by uh, file mode, we want to change that to write files so that this writes all of those VDB files to our system. And uh, over here, I'm just going to select the location. So I'll go to my desktop and I've got a folder here, uh, which is called VDB Tutorial. I'll go in that folder and just type a name. So I'll say VDB Smoke Tutorial and click on Accept. And uh, here at the end of the sequence, what I'm basically going to be doing is uh, typing in a particular value um, that's going to allow us, you'll see like when this gets exported, it's basically going to export uh, each individual frame and uh, from there, like, we won't be able to bring the entire simulation into Cinema 40. We can only bring a particular frame, uh, which is also quite cool. And VDB, uh, the actual size of the file format is quite small as well. So that saves uh, quite a lot of disk space. 
Uh, but like I said, you'll be able to choose a particular uh, frame that it was at and then work with that particular frame. So if we like frame 107, we'll just find it in our folder and then we can bring that into Cinema 4D and continue working on it. All right. All right, guys, so before we export this out, I'm actually going to add a variable to the end of this description. And I saw this in another tutorial. It just keeps the files nice and organized. Um, we're going to put underscore dollar sign F3. And this basically just changes your file types to 001, 002. And it makes just everything look a little bit more organized. And then once we've done that, we'll just say dot VDB. And we should be good to go. All right, so to export this, we want to go to File. We want to make sure that our simulation is right back at the beginning. And then we want to click on this cube over here. Make sure that's selected. And then as soon as we click on play, and if I go to my folder over here, you can see that it's starting to export every single frame uh, from our sequence. And this is exactly what you want. So if there's a particular frame uh, that you really like, we can import this particular VDB uh, sequence frame into Cinema 4D and then use the power of Octane Render to light up that smoke and play around with it. So I'm just going to let this render out a bit, uh, maybe till about, I'll say, uh, let's maybe say 60 or maybe 70. I'll just make it render out to 70 until I get uh, just enough of these different shapes and swirls to the smoke and then we'll continue from there. All right. Okay, guys, so I just rendered out the smoke till about 74 frames. And it's time to jump to Cinema 4D. So I've got Cinema 4D open here. And what we want to do is I'm going to open up uh, the Octane Render Live Preview. And I'm sure I know this is possible with other render programs. Even with Arnold, you can do this. As long as you can create a volume, you should be able to import VDBs. So you can see here with Octane, we've got uh, this Octane VDB volume. So we want to create that. And then you can see over here, we've got our Octane VDB volume. So we'll just select that. We'll go to VDB. And then over here, it's asking for that file. So just click on that. And I'm going to go to my folder with my VDB sequences. So I'm going to select, I'll say maybe frame 71, because there was enough smoke and enough uh, swirls to the smoke. So it's probably probably an interesting uh, frame to import. So I'll just select that, click on open. I'm just going to put this on my other screen quickly. And you can see it's imported it into Cinema 4D. Now it's really, really small over here. Uh, so I'm just going to change my import units to uh, decameters. Uh, so I'm still playing around with this to try and find a good, a good import size. But this, this should be fine to work with. So if I bring this back, you can see that we can actually see our smoke now uh, within Cinema 4D using Octane Render. And uh, one of the most important things to actually start visualizing the smoke, we have to light the smoke using lights. So... I'm going to go to objects and I'm going to create an octane area light and I'm just going to bring that area light up a bit. Now you can see that the smoke volume is still a little bit small so if you really wanted to you can change from decameters to hectometers. Uh, that's going to make it a lot larger which is a little bit better actually and then uh, let me go to my octane area light and as you can see I'm basically uh, lighting that smoke and visualizing it uh, using let me just make this a bit small actually so you guys can see what's happening uh, but you can see over there that I'm using uh, this octane light to visualize and light our smoke so that's basically how you would light the smoke once you've imported it you want to just use these octane lights all right guys okay Right, so I'm just going to bring another uh, object into the scene, which is going to be the Octane Daylight. And I'm going to go to my Octane Daylight and just rotate it until the background is completely black. Uh, just so we can visualize the smoke. This looks a lot better against a black background. You can see over there. And then uh, just you have to play around with the placement of this light just to see more of the smoke. 
like I said, I'm just showing you the basics of importing it into Cinema 4D and then uh, how to light it. Now, in the actual VDB volume, there's uh, quite a lot of settings. Uh, actually, by the way, when you're using lights like this, uh, what you probably want to do is go to the octane light and go to visibility and just hide the camera visibility so we've still got that light in there but now it's just the smoke that's visible but like i said in this vdb volume we've got a tab called medium now there's a lot of settings here that i still still need to explore with but you can see this is the stuff uh, that we decided to export from houdini that val x uh, val y uh, we've got absorption mapping scatter and emission uh, but what I'm going to focus on is this medium tab. If we go into that volume medium, uh, you can see we've got all these settings here from absorption to scattering. Uh, these tabs are really important. Uh, the overall density, you'll see if I bring the slider down, uh, that's basically determining how much uh, of the smoke, uh, how much density of the smoke is actually going to be visible. So if we want, want our uh, smoke to be really dense and have just a lot of this detail, uh, we can crank that up or bring it down for something a lot more subtle uh, so like i said maybe this can come in handy maybe you've got a uh, scenes that you've created in cinema 4d and you just need some smoke uh, that has some lighting some real world lighting from your scene to be applied to that smoke this can actually come in handy for stuff like that and then this option over here volume step length uh, the lower this is uh, apparently the more detail we'll see on our smoke so obviously that's obviously going to take <laughs> I just said obviously twice, but that's go that's going to take a lot more time to render. Uh, but apparently this increases the quality of smoke. Now I've played around with that, and I haven't seen any drastic improvement over the o overall uh, quality or the crisp quality of the smoke. That's why I said if someone actually knows how to troubleshoot that and get really really high quality looking smoke using this method with the VDB and Cinema 4D and Octane Render. A lot of us will appreciate that. Uh, but this is what I have uh, discovered for now. The lower this amount is, the more quality you'll get in your smoke and the longer the render time. And then uh, density, obviously, like I said, how much density is going to be in your smoke. And then the absorption is, we can change the absorption here. So if I click on that and we change the color, I'll say red can see uh, where I think the shadow or the lights are being absorbed is where that color is visible I don't understand that entirely but like I said just play around with that um, if I go back to VDB volume you can see down here under scattering uh, this is going to change the color of the smoke so if I choose maybe a blue you can see over there uh, you can just play around with that so we've got the white light coming from the octane light we've got this uh, blue smoke here and then the absorption is red so you guys can play around with that and get some interesting and quite uh, some creative uh, results now i haven't played around with the emission yet i'll get around to that but like i said guys i've showed you how we can use houdini to create smoke simulations and then how we can export those simulations bring it into Cinema 4D and then use the power of Octane Render to start adding lights and different colors to that smoke uh, to create something uh, that looks pretty cool. And then uh, what you want to do here to erase uh, the majority of all of this noise that you see in the scene, uh, you just want to go to the settings and you want to put your samples on something that's quite high. I rendered uh, one of my images on 16,000 samples uh, so just something quite high and then let it render out now this is obviously the time is going to be dependent on how many gpus you have installed but yeah that's it guys i've showed you how to export smoke bring it into cinema 4d and then play around with it so if you've got any, any scenes that need some smoke in it or if you just want to render smoke on its own you guys can play around with this and if anyone knows how to get really really crisp quality smoke uh, with a great amount of detail and fidelity uh, a lot of us will appreciate any tips and tricks on that but for now i just wanted to show you guys how you can use all of these tools in conjunction with each other all right guys so thanks for watching and stay tuned for some more tutorials all right goodbye